Hey Miami Lakers, welcome to our daily COVID-19 update here in our community. I'm joined by our town manager, Edward Peterman. Bienvenidos recientes aquí en nuestra comunidad. Eh, bienvenidos al el update de cada día, el de COVID-19, de coronavirus, aquí en nuestra comunidad. So Miami Lakers, great news. Monday, May 18th, reopening Miami Lakes economy. Uh, that information will come back to you tomorrow at about two o'clock, right, two Mr. O'clock, manager? Sir. We're gonna have a forum open uh, where we're gonna answer questions and stuff, but the order is very big, so our manager, staff, myself, everybody, we're gonna be reviewing that. Been looking at it already, but we're gonna look at it through all all the day today and tomorrow to make sure we get you guys all the important information. El lunes, mayo 18, vamos a reabrir nuestra economía aquí, nuestra comunidad. Mañana a las 2 de la tarde, vamos a venirte en vivo de Eh, de Facebook Live, de YouTube y Twitter para hablar de, de las regulaciones de reabrir el lunes. Pero ahora, right now, we have our daily COVID update, Mr. Manager. Yeah, I wanted to start off by uh, giving good news, right? We have a little streak going. Today is the sixth day, six days in a row with zero uh, new cases. So we've gone six days, almost a week, without a single new case. Our number is still at 45. We've gone 19 days in almost the last three weeks. We've only had two cases. So that's incredible, incredible news. Uh, so obviously, the, I can't imagine the curve being any more flatter than that. Eh, le quería avisar que hoy tenemos el mismo número desde hace seis días. 45 casos confirmados positivos. Buenísima noticia que estamos seis días seguidos sin un caso nuevo. Solamente dos casos nuevos en los últimos 19 días. Son casi tres semanas. Solamente dos casos nuevos. Que, que incre- buenísima noticia. Uh, just to follow up on what the uh, mayor said. Today we got, there's going to be two documents that are going to be released publicly here. Uh, hopefully within the next 24 hours. One document is going to be the actual order from Miami-Dade County Mayor uh, Carlos Jimenez. Uh, implementing the reopening, uh, phase one of the reopening of businesses. That order, the reason it's not out yet, that order is being coordinated with Broward County and getting the approval, the approval of uh, Governor Ron DeSantis. So that's the only thing they're waiting on. The second document is going to be a guidebook. It's over 100 pages long. It goes business type by business type, industry by industry. It talks about all, all of the guidelines with social distancing and hand washing for employees, for patrons. It's incredible. It's really well put together. Those two documents within the next 24 hours will be uh, issued publicly and officially. And that'll be uh, the guidebook. We'll give guidance to all of you business owners to be able to know what you need to do, how you need to prepare uh, for Monday's reopening. So, le quería avisar que en las próximas 24 horas hay dos documentos que se van a, a publicar. Uno es la orden de emergencia del alcalde del condado Carlos Jiménez, que, que lo que están esperando es, se está coordinando con el condado de Broward y también eh, res, están esperando la aprobación del gobernador. El segundo documento para ustedes los que son dueños de negocio es un guía, es más de 100 páginas Es buenísimo, es bien extenso, eh, más de 100 páginas y habla de todos los tipos de negocios y las regulaciones y las restricciones para empleados, para la gente que van, uh, que entran a, a comprar o a comer en su negocio. Va a haber toda esa información, es muy completo y eso en las próximas 24 horas ya se va a publicar. So that's great, great news and we'll be going to you live tomorrow at 2 o'clock from Town Hall. We'll have our Deputy Town Attorney, the Chair of Economic Development Committee, uh, and the Manager myself kind of explaining as to what are the details, right? It's a very long document, but we're going to make sure we get that information out to consumers. But more importantly, because we're going to be reopening on Monday, uh, the business owners in our community. Uh, so that's 2 p.m. on Monday. Uh, tomorrow, a las 2 de la, de la tarde, yo no, no, no lunes, mañana, a las 2 de la tarde, mañana, vamos a tener un video en vivo eh, explicando todas las regulaciones, todo lo que está pasando. Eh, so usted seguro que entren a, la, a las redes sociales para ver lo que está pasando y qué van a ser la, las regulaciones, no nada más que para el 
consumidor, pero para los negociantes aquí en nuestra comunidad. And just a reminder, tomorrow, tomorrow at 9 o'clock in the morning, we'll be opening up the gates at Royal Oaks Park for folks that want to get tested for the COVID-19, the coronavirus antibody. So that is tomorrow at Royal Oaks Park, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, first come, first serve. Remember, it's a, it's a blood donation, but they're also doing the free uh, antibody test, which is so, so, so important to keep getting that data uh, because there's a lot of folks that might have had coronavirus, uh, and they never had it, and, and we don't know. So those are folks that had it, they were asymptomatic maybe, and, and they've recovered. And there's a belief that there's a lot of people like that in our communities, and it's important to keep getting that data because it showcases what the real mortality rate is, what the real infection rate is, Uh, so that is so, so important. Mañana, las nueve de la mañana, nueve de la mañana, en el parque Royal Oaks, abran la puerta para coger el examen de, de la, del, ¿cómo se dice en español? Eh, los anticuerpos. Los anticuerpos, y, y que es la inmunidad, pero es tan importante. So llegan ahí, van a donar sangre, pero van a hacer el examen gratis para el anticuerpo de coronavirus. Pero es muy importante porque muchas personas, eh, hay especulación que hay muchas personas que tuvieron el coronavirus y no lo sabían porque no tenían los síntomas. So, es importante para ver quién tiene la inmunidad eh, porque ayuda a ver qué son los el mortality rate de verdad y también ayuda para ver qué, qué infeccioso es esta, este virus. So, mañana, no a la mañana, y tenemos eso. Y a las 2 de la tarde tenemos eh, el video en vivo de aquí del ayuntamiento donde vamos a estar hablando de todo lo que está pasando con las regulaciones para reabrir nuestra economía el lunes. Uh, if you have questions, submit them now. Um, we're going to be hanging on for a little bit longer, uh, waiting till you guys have uh, any questions, comments. I'm sure tomorrow uh, you'll be having a lot more, but if not, we're going to be logging off in the next uh, two to three minutes. Anything else going on? How's uh, uh, yeah, we have Johnny uh, with a question, Mr. Manager. Can you get the antibody test without donating blood? What if someone can't donate blood? for one reason or another. Yeah, at our event tomorrow, uh, it, it's the two are together. So I'm sure that there are some places that you could get tested just for the antibodies, but tomorrow, our event, you donate blood, and then you get the uh, your blood tested for the antibodies, and actually, they'll be testing for other things. It's almost like a mini physical. They'll be checking your cholesterol and other things, so it's very informative, it's a great thing. Uh, as far as the exclusionary uh, criteria for people, whether they can or cannot donate blood, uh, you can go to our website and see the flyer, uh, the name of the company that will be running the uh, blood drive and antibody testing is on there. You can contact them and they'll be able to provide you information on whether you are eligible to uh, donate blood or not. So la pregunta del señor Figueroa, eh, ¿se puede donar sangre mañana se, o, o puede coger el examen del coronavirus sin donar sangre mañana en el evento en el parque Royal Oaks? Sí, el evento de nosotros mañana, eh, está, las dos cosas están ligadas. So, es la donación de sangre junto con la prueba para los anticuerpos, pero también van a hacer otra serie de exámenes, también te van a chequear el colesterol y otras otra pruebas sanguíneas. So, todo eso se va a hacer mañana. Uh, pero mañana para hacer la, poder hacer la prueba de los anticuerpos tiene que donar la sangre. So Barbara Salem uh, wants to know where will the guidebook be posted? Well, once it becomes official, you're gonna you're gonna be tired of seeing it, right? Uh, it's gonna be published. We're gonna be able to we're gonna post it on our website. Uh, you'll be able to see it probably on the state website or the county's website. But we're gonna be sure to put it on our social media and it will also be posted on our website, which is miamilakes-fl.gov, and we hope that within the next 24 hours, that guidebook will be available on our website, so you can go right there. It's a lengthy document. It's over 100 pages long, and you'll be able to go see, and if you're a business owner, you'll be able to go right to your industry. You'll be able to see what's uh, going to be expected of your employees, as well as what's going to be expected with facial coverings, hand washing, social distancing, uh, for patrons that come into uh, your establishment. And remember, Barbara, and everybody else watching, that tomorrow at 2 o'clock, we're going to be going through that guidebook. I know there's going to be a lot of questions that a lot of uh, consumers and a, and a lot of business owners are going to have. So we're going to have the folks from our team 
uh, sitting right there to answer those questions. We want to make sure that the next several days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is education, 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 education. We want to drill it in as much as possible so when we restart on Monday, there is least, uh, the least amount of hiccups as possible. So, la pregunta que tenía Bárbara es, era sobre el libro de la guía para reabrir nuestra economía. ¿Dónde va a estar esa guía? Sí, en las próximas 24 horas ese, esa guía va a estar puesta en el, la página web de nosotros, que es Miami Lakes Raya fl.gov en esa uh, página web de nosotros va a estar ahí eh, mañana en cuanto sea oficial la orden y el libro ese esa guía va a estar puesta en la web de nosotros en la página web de nosotros y acuérdense mañana a las dos como estamos hablando administrador y yo para estar seguro eh, vamos a tener en, en vivo en facebook live el administrador yo el chairman de la economía aquí en nuestra comunidad el, Deputy, el abogado eh, deputy de nuestra comunidad también para estar seguro porque van a haber muchas preguntas lo que no queremos ser es que damos esta guía y que la persona los lea y tienen preguntas y no saben qué llamar llaman aquí en el ayuntamiento esto no no mañana a las dos vamos a tener una sesión donde todo el mundo va a tener la oportunidad de preguntar las preguntas y nosotros vamos a estar seguros de darle la respuesta inmediatamente ahí para estar seguro que los próximos cuatro días es jueves, viernes, sábado y domingo. Educación, 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 educación. Estar seguro que educamos a, la, a los consumidores y a los negociantes. Para estar seguro cuando empezamos el lunes que no vea ningún problema. Y eso, obviamente, no todo en la vida no es perfecto, pero vamos a estar seguros que lo más posible eh, trabajamos juntos como un equipo. Que todo el mundo en nuestra comunidad ha hecho mucho sacrificio a llegar a este punto que vamos a reabrir el lunes. Pero, obviamente, eh, obviously, and I just want to reiterate, I mean, just because I, I, I know that there are, there are businesses that won't be reopening. And I want to touch upon those real quick. Tomorrow we're going to focus on the ones that will be opening, what the guidelines are. But I want to make sure that those expectations are set. But there will be businesses that will not be reopening uh, due, not to us, but due to the guidelines set forth by the county and by the, the state governor. Can you talk about those businesses real quick, Mr. Manager? Because I want to make sure that those expectations are met and because those businesses obviously they hire people in our community and, and, and there's folks that want to see those businesses reopen too. Yeah, there's very few businesses that will be excluded from that first phase. That first phase. Primarily it'll be uh, the theaters, any theater that we have. I know we have a, a play theater and we have the movie theater. Uh, we also, uh, also excluded from that first phase will be gymnasiums, gyms. So those are the ones primarily that affect us. Uh, you're gonna notice in uh, restaurants that will be reopening, uh, most likely the bar area of the restaurant will be still closed down. Uh, nightclubs, we don't have any just nightclubs. Every, all of our, uh, any of our bars are always, uh, they're tied to uh, restaurants. But those are kind of the areas and the types of businesses that will be closed, uh, still remain closed starting Monday. So, lo vieron bien, van a haber negocios para estar seguro que las expectativas, las inspecciones aquí en nuestra comunidad, todo el mundo lo entiende, van a haber negocios que no, no vamos a estar 100% reabierto nuestra economía, pero van a haber negocios que no se van a poder abrir. Eh, y no es algo regulación de la ciudad de Miami Lakes, pero regulaciones del condado y del el estado, del gobernador. Eh, señor administrador, ¿qué son los negocios que el lunes no van a reabrir? Son pocos, la mayoría de los negocios en, en nuestra ciudad sí van a poder abrir, pero lo que no van a poder abrir son los teatros y los gimnasios. En los restaurantes, la área del, del bar, esa área probablemente eh, se va a mantener cerrada, pero todos los demás negocios en nuestra ciudad sí van a poder abrir, empezando el lunes, con ciertas restricciones y limitaciones. John Charles wants to know, he just got in, so he wants to know, what's the count? The count, believe it or not, John, is still 45. Six days, six days now in a row without a single case in the town of Miami Lakes. Uh, that's almost three weeks that we've only had two cases and it's been uh, very, uh, a very indicative of the flattening of the curve here in the town of Miami Lakes. Thank you, John. John something I do want to reiterate also, because there's a lot of uh, people in our community, a lot of residents in our community that might own businesses in other cities. Uh, so while the town of Miami Lakes will be reopening on Monday and we'll be working with 
exactly what the county is doing in the unincorporated areas. There are already cities throughout our county that have said that they're not going to open. I know there are many residents that of ours that might own businesses in those cities that might work in those cities. Um, but I know that there are municipalities that are, won't be opening uh, on Monday. I don't know if you have a list of those. Yeah, I mean, the cities that I've heard, and it's not official because I haven't seen any official declarations by those uh, town or city administrations, but the ones that I have heard that will not be reopening, I think they're going to reopen later on in the week, like maybe Wednesday or Thursday of next week, is the city of Miami, the city of Hialeah, and the city of Miami Beach are the three that I heard were going to delay by a couple days their uh, phase one reopening of businesses. So, it's going to be very clear, because obviously, the city of Miami Lakes will open on the lunes, because we know that our president ya quiere moverse la economía de una manera segura. Eh, estamos trabajando con el condado, lo que van a hacer en las áreas no en, incorporadas, pero van a haber ciudades donde muchos de ustedes eh, son dueños de negocio, trabajan en esas ciudades, pero van a haber varias ciudades en el condado Miami-Dade County que no van a reabrir el lunes. So yo quiero estar bien seguro de eso porque las ciudades eh, tienen la oportunidad de, de abrir o no abrir. Eh, so hay, hay ya varias ciudades que han dicho y han hablado hoy que no van a abrir el lunes de una manera diferente, no sé si quiere abrir Sí, sobre... lo, las tres ciudades que nosotros hemos oído hoy que no van a abrir el lunes van a demorar eh, la reapertura de sus negocios por unos cuantos días yo he oído miércoles o jueves de la semana que viene son la ciudad de Miami la ciudad de Hialeah y la ciudad de Miami Beach son las tres ciudades que no, yo me enteré que van a demorar, no mucho, pero por lo menos dos o tres días más que el lunes. O a lo mejor para media semana de la semana que viene, a mediados de la semana que viene, ya van a estar abriendo. So be sure to keep watching the news because you might uh, work or own a business in one of these cities. There might be, the list might get bigger. There might be cities that decide to follow suit. So just make sure that you follow that because although we're doing it, so is the county, cities that have that option not to reopen. And some will take that option. Uh, Rolando Torres. Will, will hair salons be able to open on Monday or Wednesday? Just saw on Channel 10. And I think hitting on what the manager talked, that's going to be part of the confusion on the reopening, right? Uh, although the town of Miami Lakes and the county, and there's a lot of cities that will be reopening on Monday, there will be cities that won't be reopening. So I know I have friends of mine that might uh, go into Hialeah and go to uh, their, their barber, but unfortunately it looks like they won't be reopening on Monday, maybe Wednesday, like the manager said. I don't know what you want to touch upon that. but salons in the town of Miami Lakes, barbershops in the town of Miami Lakes, will be reopening on Monday. They will be opening on Monday. And uh, I don't believe even the neighboring cities like we talked about, Hialeah, Miami, Miami Beach, I don't believe their delay is going to be very long. I think it's just going to be they're giving a little extra time for business owners to prepare for the opening. We believe that the business owners in the town of Miami Lakes are more anxious uh, to get their businesses up and running, and I'm sure the employees that work in those businesses are anxious to get back to work. Uh, in addition, I think that the guidance has been, everybody is well aware of the things that we have to do, right? So we've been at this uh, exercise for two months or more, and I believe that business owners feel that they know the, the measures that they need to take. So they are ready, even if they have to rush them on over the weekend to get their business ready, they are ready to go to work on uh, Monday morning. Solo eh, quiere, el señor Torre está preguntando, él quiere saber qué está pasando con los salones de belleza, con las barberías, eh, si van a abrir el lunes o el, mar, o el miércoles. Eh, eh, y para estar seguro, obviamente, eh, la ciudad de Miami Lakes vamos a reabrir los salones y, y lo, lo de belleza y la barbería el lunes. Pero hay otras ciudades que no. So, te doy un ejemplo. Si tú vas a una barbería en Jayalía o una, un salón de belleza en Jayalía, el lunes no van a estar. Eh, abierto, pero aquí en la ciudad de Miami Lakes, eh, sí, I don't know if you want to touch upon that. Sí, eh, la, la, los salones de belleza, la barbería, eso van a abrir, eh, son la primera, están en la primera ola, la primera fase de la reapertura de negocio. Eh, en la ciudad de Miami Lakes, uh, van a abrir el lunes, en otras ciudades, por aquí cerca, Hialeah, Miami Beach, Miami, Se van a demorar un, unos cuantos días después, no mucho, pero espero que sean probablemente dos o tres días más. So John Quartas wants to know, how about people that don't follow the restrictions, yeah, those restrictions that are going to be uh, released and we'll be talking about tomorrow, 
or indications when using uh, the mask, like if they're not using masks. Yeah, whatever restrictions are put into place, we're gonna, we've been at this for a long time, right? We've been now doing it for several weeks. The, uh, the restrictions we've had from the beginning, we had them originally for uh, grocery stores, uh, then we did it for uh, patrons going into grocery stores, we've been at it, and our enforcement arm is our police officers. And I, I hate to even use the word enforcement, because it's not like they're taking hauling anybody off to jail. They have been doing it through education. Education, education, like the mayor was saying earlier, and we expect that that will continue that way. Uh, thankfully, uh, all, all the Miami Lakes, uh, the, 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 the lion's share of the Miami Lakes residents have adhered to the recommendations, the guidance, the uh, restrictions, and I think that has proven to be why uh, we have only had so few, no, no cases in the last six days, only two in the last three weeks. That is the reason why, because of the, the hard work and efforts and the suffering. I know that it's been difficult for all of our residents. And uh, that's really the reason why we've been able to, to, uh, to beat this virus here, at least in the town of Miami Lakes. So, Senor Cuartes, ¿quiere saber qué, va, qué le va a pasar a las personas que no se están poniendo las máscaras, que no van a ver las regulaciones y, y no le importa y no, no lo va a hacer? ¿Qué les van a pasar a esa, a esa persona? Sí, igual como hemos hecho desde el principio, todas las restricciones que han existido eh, a través de las distintas fases de, de, este, de este virus, eh, los policías son, han sido los que nos han ayudado para, uh, para enforzar todas las leyes, las restricciones, las limitaciones, pero no lo han hecho eh, con mucha, lo han hecho bien fácil con, a través de la educación. Nadie, no han arrestado a nadie, pero eh, han hecho todo a través de, de la educación y nosotros, nuestros residentes aquí de Miami Lakes, eh, se han portado increíblemente bien. Han, se han mantenido eh, observando bien las restricciones y por eso es que tenemos eh, tan pocos casos aquí en la ciudad de Miami Lakes. So Didi uh, wants to know about tomorrow's uh, COVID-19 antibody test uh, event that we're having. Uh, do you have to donate blood in order to find out uh, if you have the antibodies just to know because I have health issues. So tomorrow at 2 p.m. and I mean, sorry, at uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, we will be opening up Royal Oaks Park for the antibody <laughs> testing, and that's uh, Didi's question. Is there any way not to donate uh, blood and just do the, an the antibody test? The, the, with our uh, event tomorrow, it's coupled together. So you donate blood, you'd have your blood tested, not only for the antibodies, but also for cholesterol and other things like that. So there may be other places nearby that uh, are not requiring that they're doing just the antibody testing. But our event tomorrow, uh, the two things are tied together. Susie Large, uh, how about nail salons? Yes, nail salons will be opening up. And again, in the town of Miami Lakes, yes, in unincorporated Miami Dade County, yes. But there are cities that many of you may tr be traveling to nail salons in different cities. Just look on the news because there's multiple cities that won't be reopening on Monday. Eh, los salones de, de hacerse las uñas y eso, sí, obviamente se van a reabrir aquí en la ciudad de Miami Lakes el lunes eh, con regulaciones, que vamos a estar hablando de eso mañana a las 2 de la tarde, pero estén seguros que miren los noticieros porque, y los otros vamos a abrir, pero van a haber otras ciudades que no van a abrir el lunes. So, si tú te haces las uñas en otra ciudad, estén seguro que lo ve porque puede ser que no estén abiertos. Barb Delgado, I read uh, Miami-Dade County is stating 50% for restaurants and, uh, and hair salons and nail salons, 25% capacity. Is this the same for Miami Lakes? Are these, or do you want to start taking these questions tomorrow on length or what do you Well, think? what we know is that that has not been beneficial, right? What I do know is that Miami-Dade County is asking the governor to uh, increase the uh, re uh, allowed uh, percentage of uh, patrons in a restaurant up to 50%. When the governor opened up the rest of the state instead of uh, and uh, kept closed Dave Broward and Palm Beach two weeks ago, he had a limit of 25%. Miami-Dade County, and that may be one of the things that's kind of holding it up is Miami-Dade and Broward are asking the governor to increase it to 50%. I suspect that if he agrees to allow that to happen, he'll open that up to all the restaurants in the state of Florida that they'll be moved up to 50%. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why I believe uh, this is, we thought that all of this was gonna be out public a couple days ago, but uh, 
that'll be one of the things that once the official order comes out, we'll know more, and that's one of the reasons why uh, tomorrow's uh, Facebook Live is very important, because there's where you're gonna get a lot of the uh, these kind of questions answered. Barb, tune in tomorrow at 2 p.m., and we'll be going uh, through those guidelines in length and, and what the percentages are or whatnot. We'll be doing that tomorrow with our town manager, the chair of our economic development committee, and our deputy town attorney. All right, so uh, Nancy Rogers, Chair Rogers from a neighborhood improvement uh, from, from the Public Safety Committee, wants to know, uh, is tomorrow's blood drive uh, with the COVID-19 testing, is it a park and then donate donation uh, in a vehicle such as a big red bus or is it a drive-through style? Like how, how is tomorrow, the logistics happening tomorrow? It'll be like a big red bus. It'll be, it's not red, I think it's multicolored, but it's in the, the bus, you go in, I donated blood here in the town hall uh, parking lot last week, and uh, there's a lot of uh, protections. Everybody's gl uh, gloved up and masked up, so there's it's all uh, it's all uh, safe inside. And then you donate blood, and then they uh, will check your blood for the uh, antibodies. But I think the bigger question, Mr. Manager, is if the bus only has a certain amount of, of seats, right? Donation seats. Yes. And we get just say 20 cars. I think the idea is. He, not for people to get out of their cars, but to wait in their cars in line and then move along that. Correct. They're, they're not going to overload the inside of the bus. There's going to be plenty of space for social distancing. That right now is the most important thing. Facial coverings and social distancing are really what have, uh, you know, kind of beaten this virus. And we're going to make sure that that's adhered to tomorrow during the blood drive. So, mañana, cuando la, en la donación de sangre en el parque Royal Oaks, eh, cuando estén en línea, van a ver una, una guagua bien grande y en ese autobús eh, eh, pueden, ahí donde van a donar sangre, pero si están esperando, pueden esperar en la línea en su carro, obviamente, para estar seguro eh, y estar y están mirando la, las regulaciones que ya existen. Obviamente, no queremos ver gente en línea, eso, yo sé que la administración va a estar por ahí también, yo también, a, a ver lo que está pasando, pero vamos a estar seguros que todo el mundo esté esperando en sus eh, carros en una línea. Y así vamos a mover, así, ¿verdad? Exacto. No van a recargar la, eh, el, el ómnibus lleno de gente. Todo el mundo se va a mantener con la distancia, el distanciamiento social adecuado. Y toda la gente que están esperando, van a esperar afuera. Susie wants to know, can you please give the full details of the location on the blood drive tomorrow to Royal Oaks Park at 9 a.m. to 5 p.m.? Mr. Manager, you know the address uh, for Royal Oaks Park? It's Northwest 87th Avenue, approximately on 164th Street. There's a gigantic park. You're driving on 87th Avenue. There's no way you can miss it. So it's Northwest 87th Avenue and 164th Street. You'll see it there. It's on the west side of the street. The entrance is right on 87th Avenue. You go right in and there'll be uh, people there directing you where to go. So, acuérdate, mañana es en el Parque Royal Oaks, que está en la 87 avenida, el parque grande donde todo el mundo juega lo que se dice fútbol, el balón pie. Eh, so, estén seguros que estén ahí a las 9 de la mañana y vamos a estar abiertos hasta las 5 de la tarde, pues bien, bien importante que lo hacemos eh, esta prueba mañana del anticuerpo del, del coronavirus. Diana wants to know, will they let you know your antibody results right there and then? I believe so, I think it's right there. So that's a very good thing. I think that uh, once you they test your blood, then I think there's like a 10 minute, within 10, 15 minutes, they give you the results right there. So you won't have to wait, is what I was told. I'll follow up, we'll follow up with those folks and get the information, because yeah, I'm not, that's, that's what they had said, so. Yeah, I mean, I had an antibody test done about two weeks ago, and it was done within, uh, within 10 minutes, 15 minutes, they gave me the results right on the spot. So I believe that this will be uh, similar to that. Got it, got it. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't sure, but I'll follow up with the folks organizing it, so we'll make sure we get the information. Because I know sometimes they might get the blood tested off site, and they do the. Uh, there's different types of antibody tests, yes. so we'll, we'll follow up with them. Uh, Katrina wants to know: Are we under water restrictions? Can you do something? Can I do something about the about? Uh, can I do some pressure washing? Will I get in trouble? Please clarify. No, there should be no problems with you uh, pressure washing, whether it's your roof or your driveway, your sidewalks. 
your back uh, patio, you're, uh, you're, you're free and clear to go and do uh, pressure washing to make sure your homes are uh, looking fine. So la señora Secadas quiere saber si hay restricciones en utilizando agua, si puede salir a, afuera y, y limpiar la, la, la acera o el driveway, lo que sea. Eh, y en este momento no hay ninguna restricción. No, no hay ninguna restricción. So, si quiere contratar a alguien o hacerlo ustedes de lavar a presión el techo, la acera, el driveway, eh, nada de eso está bajo ninguna restricción. So thank you, Miami Lakers. If you got any other questions, comments, concerns, submit them in the next 30 seconds to a minute. We're going to be logging off. But again, we'll see you tomorrow at Royal Lopes Park. We open up at 9 o'clock in the morning and we close at 5 to do the COVID-19 antibody test. Make sure that you get there early. Obviously, we're going to be uh, donating blood, uh, which is which is great. And But they're going to be doing the antibody test, which is phenomenal, especially that we're going to be reopening up our economy on Monday. Acuérdense que mañana en el parque Royal Oaks, de la nueva mañana hasta las 5 de la tarde, Haciendo la examen del anticuerpo y dando, donando sangre que es tan importante. I do see another question. Dolores, mosquitoes are really bad in, uh, really bad in my area. Is Miami Lakes spraying? Miami Lakes, we do not spray for, uh, for mosquitoes. The entity that has control over mosquitoes is Miami-Dade County. So if you have an area in and around your house uh, that has uh, problems with a lot of mosquitoes, contact 311 and they'll be able to help you out and either go and spray in your area, uh, whether it's in your yard or in the, the area, the general area of your, uh, of your house. And shout out to Miami Lakes resident, uh, Michael Moot. I know he's probably watching uh, the video, but he's somebody that can, uh, can help you out. He, he works for that department, does a great job uh, putting out the information, communications and all that. And he's, he's always watching. So I'm sure he's seen this information, but definitely call 311 and I'm sure he's on it also by uh, by watching the uh, Facebook Live. So I don't see any other questions, uh, comments, but just remember, we talked about what's going on tomorrow at Royal Oaks Park. Um, also, we have a food distribution. Do you have the info for that, Mr. Manager? Yeah, there's a food distribution on Saturday. So that information will be posted on our website and our social media uh, later on today, but it's going to be Saturday morning at the United Methodist Church. and. Uh, and you'll get that information at some point later on today. You'll be able to see that on our uh, social media and our website. El sábado en la iglesia de la Calabaza, la famosa iglesia que se llama Miami Lakes United Methodist Church, que está siempre llena de calabaza, va a estar en una distribución de alimentos el sábado. Um, just a reminder, very, very, very important. Tune in tomorrow at 2 o'clock as we go through the reopening Miami Lakes guidelines. Uh, tomorrow at two o'clock, we're gonna go, we're gonna comb through those guidelines. We're gonna have a conversation with our community. Obviously, a lot of you are, are consumers and a lot of you are uh, business owners. Uh, so we wanna make sure that everybody's on the same page because there's gonna be regulations even for the people going into these establishments. And there's gonna be regulations for people uh, operating these establishments. So we wanna make sure that everybody is on the, uh, on the same page. Uh, Lim Pomatos, uh, who's done a great job, great volunteer here in our community, a member of our planning and zoning board right now. Anything, and the, the, the individual, the founder of our Miami Lake Spoon and Wine Festival, uh, anything which would prevent people from donating blood health-wise? The, I suspect that there are, right? So if you have conditions of your blood that would prevent, uh, prevent you being able to do, but if you go to our uh, social media and find the flyer for the uh, blood drive, the name of the entity that's running the blood drive is on there, and you contact them, uh, and they'll be able to answer any questions regarding if there's any exclusionary criteria that will prevent you from donating blood. La señora Mato quiere saber si hay algo que puede prevenir eh, una persona que no le fuera, fuera a venir una persona por donar la eh, sangre si tienen problemas de la salud o algo así que, que deben hacer si sí, la compañía o la entidad que está administrando eh, la donación de sangre mañana el nombre de ellos está en el flyer en, la, en el anuncio en la página de nosotros uh, el, el social media page de 
ahí eh, busque ese número, el nombre, y entonces los contacta, eh, llámalo a ellos y ellos te pueden avisar si hay alguna cosa que te pre previene poder donar sangre. Diana, I uh, know tomorrow it's open to, to anybody. So tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., the blood drive, the COVID-19 uh, antibody test is open to, to, to anybody that wants to, to attend, regardless of where they live. So mañana uh, está abierto para todo el mundo, de noroeste de Condado, el sur de Broward, de donde sean, eh, pero de la mañana mañana hasta las 5 de la tarde en el parque Royal Oaks Park. Eh, trata de llegar temprano, obviamente, yo pienso que va a haber una línea, pero si hay, se queden en su carro y, y todo el mundo va a esperar así en una manera segura. Um, so Miami Lakers, just a reminder, 2 p.m. tomorrow, tune in, very, very, very important information as we go through the guidelines for reopening our community on Monday. So thank you guys again. Thank you for all the sacrifices that you all have made uh, to make sure we get to this point. Uh, going through those guidelines tomorrow and reopening on Monday. Muchas gracias otra vez por todos los sacrificios que han hecho. Eh, y lo vemos mañana a las 2 de la tarde aquí en Facebook Live, en YouTube Live y en Twitter también en vivo. Eh, anything else, Mr. Manager? No, I just wanted to remind everybody, this is going to be the most dramatic change that we've seen since we shut everything down. All I am saying is please be patient. Monday, like the mayor said, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be problem free. So all I'm asking is everybody be patient, business owners, patrons, be patient, be prepared. Obviously, for sure, almost everywhere you go, you're going to need your facial covering. So uh, be patient, and everything will, uh, thankfully, it's great news that we're going to reopen our uh, economy. Just repeating myself, 9 o'clock in the morning tomorrow, Royal Oaks Park, 9 to 5, COVID-19 antibody test. And very, very, very important, 2 p.m., tune in. Everybody needs to tune in tomorrow because that's where we're going to be having the conversation about reopening our economy, going through those guidelines, and more importantly, going through what consumers need to do and what the business owners need to do also. So, mañana, a la luna mañana, en el Parque Royal Oaks, acuérdense, tenemos el examen del coronavirus, del, del, del anticuerpo, de la inmunidad, a ver si lo tienen, eh, y donan la eh, sangre. Pero muy, muy, muy importante, mañana a las 2 de la tarde, eh, ven para atrás para Facebook para que okay, vamos a tener la, la conversación de reabrir nuestra con, con, eh, economía, pero más importante, para, eh, saber qué son las regulaciones para los consumidores y para los negociantes al, al mismo tiempo, que es bien, bien importante y vamos a estar hablando de eso para que todo el mundo esté listo para el lunes. Educación, 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 los próximos cuatro días para estar seguro que reabrimos sin ningún problema. We will continue educating for the next four days as to what the guidelines are. So come Monday, we can reopen our community without any hiccups, and hopefully we, we get that done. So Mammy Lakers, thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow, remember, at 2 o'clock. Usually we start these at 4, 4.30, 5 o'clock, but tomorrow's at 2 o'clock, and it's very important that everybody uh, tune in. Take care, we'll see you tomorrow, and together we will get through this. God bless you.